SmartThings Edge is a new architecture for hub-connected devices that uses device drivers that execute locally on the SmartThings hub. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a SmartThings Edge driver for a Z-Wave device, the AOTech Multisensor. Let's get started. There are a few prerequisites. You will need a Samsung account, a supported hub with a firmware version of at least 38, and an AOTech Multisensor ready to pair. On your workstation, you will need to have the SmartThings CLI installed and authorized. You can find a full list of prerequisites and the instructions for installing them in the written guide accompanying the video. On my local PC, I have already cloned the driver samples from the developer repo and navigated to the location on my command line. I'm going to open the driver package in my code editor and give you a brief overview of the package structure. We will start with the config.yaml file. Here, we define the name of our package and the package key. These should be unique to our SmartThings account. In the config.yaml, we can also define driver permissions. The profiles folder contains the profile for our device. In the profile, we specify the capabilities and the preferences for our device. In this example, we will configure a custom preference to adjust the PR time. We will set the minimum and maximum times that will be allowed when editing this preference in the mobile app. In the source folder, we will include driver tests and any additional helper libraries we might need to add features to our driver. We don't have any in this example, so the driver is super lightweight. init.lua will initialize the driver with the configuration that we have provided. We define the device fingerprint in the fingerprints.yaml. Once we assign our custom driver, any new devices added that match this fingerprint will use the new driver. And that is a basic overview of this driver package. Let's head back over to the command line and run our first command. The first command we are going to run is smartthings edge drivers package, and we direct that command at the folder containing our driver. If the package command is successful, it will return a driver ID, a name, a package key, and a driver version. To make this driver available, we need to create a channel. The command to create a channel is smartthings edge channels create. A channel needs a name, a description, and a URL to the terms of service. If the channel was created successfully, we'll see an output with the channel ID and the other information that we supplied. Once our channel is created, we need to enroll the hub into that channel. We run the command smartthings edge channels enroll. We select the channel to enroll our hub into. We select the hub that we want to enroll. And if successful, we will see that our hub ID was enrolled into that channel ID. Now we can assign our driver to the channel. We use the command smartthings edge channels assign. Select the channel to assign the driver to. Select the driver that we are assigning to that channel. And if successful, a confirmation will display that the driver was published to that channel. Once we have a published driver, we can install it with the command smartthings edge drivers install. Select the hub to install the driver to and select the channel that we want to install it from. Now that the driver is on our hub, we can run the logging command and pair the device. The logging command is smartthings edge drivers logcat. The logging command takes an IP address. There are instructions for finding the hub's IP address in the guide accompanying this video. Once we have logging started, we can switch over to the mobile app and pair the device. In this instance, I'm pairing the device by using the scanned nearby devices. I'm going to follow the instructions in my mobile app for pairing the multi-sensor device. After the device is paired, you will see messages in the logging window. These messages contain information about what is happening during the pairing process and inclusion into the hub. As long as we don't see any errors, we should be good to go. Now we can go back to the SmartThings app and find the device that we just paired. If everything went well, we can interact with the device in real time and see it generating events in the logger. 
Now, this is just a brief introduction to getting started with SmartThings Edge and Z-Wave devices. There is so much more that we can do with Edge. Head on over to the community at community.smartthings.com. In the future, we'll be sharing more of what is possible with Edge, including LAN integrations and other surprises. Let us know what you can do with SmartThings Edge in the community.